A lot of you might feel a bit pissed off, but um, I'm sober this time. <laughs> this is my Xiaomi M365 Pro. I've done, I don't know, just over 50 miles on it. And although I look a dickhead, I've enjoyed every single minute of it. Um, it can be a bit uncomfortable. Believe me, it can. It can be eye-wobbling uncomfortable. But overall, I'm absolutely, f I'm over the moon with it. Um, I mean, it does about a 30 mile on a charge. So it's, it's served me well so far. I've had no problems. The only thing that I've done, as you can see, there's a lot of dust on it. It is a dust magnet. I've put this thing on here which strengthens the, the mug guard. These mug guards are actually made of metal. Um, they're aluminium, apparently aircraft grade aluminium, but it's from China, so I doubt it. Uh, on the front we've got, I've heard mixed reports on this. Uh, it, apparently it's a 300 watt hub um, and it'll actually pump out one kilowatt under load. That's if you put the, the hacked firmware on, which is which is something that within a couple of miles <laughs> I got back and put the hacked firmware on it. On the comments of my video, the one where I was a bit inebriated, uh, somebody said, I repair those, and he gave me a list of three or four things to actually check. I can't remember who actually said it. I'm going to leave the name there. And he said the three things to actually check. Um... But to do those three things, I've got to take it apart. So, I'm going to take it apart for two reasons. Is number one, to do the modifications. And number two, to see if I can possibly upgrade it to give it a lot more power. I want at least three kilowatts out of it. I don't know if it's going to be um, capable of actually delivering that. I've got to take the motor apart purely to check the windings and make sure it's all sealed and everything but I want to see exactly what I can actually pump through it. At the moment, with the power that it's got, on gravel, you can't stop the front end from spinning up. So I'm, I am don't know what to do. I, I want to give it more power, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> so I'm going to take it apart. The battery and the electronics, the batteries at the back, the electronics part, speed control and B, uh, BMS and everything are all at the front. So I'm going to take it all out and I'm going to see what's what. Before I go any further, I want to bring to you a section of the Highway Act 1835, which is still in force now. It hasn't been updated. Um, it says, Any person that, will, uh, that shall willfully ride upon any footpath or causeway by the side of the road, made or set apart for the use of accommodation of foot passengers, or shall willfully lead any horse ass, sheep, mule, swine or cattle or carriage of any description or any truck or sledge upon any such footpath or causeway and at the bottom it says every person so offending in any of the cases aforesaid shall for each and every such offence counterfeit and pay the sum not exceeding 40 shillings which is two pounds to get it apart, literally, there's a plate, there's a cover, where is it, this cover here, sits on the back like that, so you take all the screws out, god knows how many of them are, they're all, they're all around here, and then you do, there's two bolts, which, I'll get my uh, torch, there's two bolts on the back, one there, one there, which are those things there and then there's two on the front and that's it and then it looks like there's an XT30 connector on there so if I unplug that sorry you should always pl unplug these are the balance wires I presume uh, you unplug the balance wires first like that And disconnect the battery and you take the wire out of there this is how easy it is I'm gonna do it with one hand oh that actually goes into the box there so I can't and that's sealed in with oh, it's sealed in with silicon and so I can't really get that out 
this cable here which goes to the backlight. So that's for the charge lead which I'm going to disconnect there. There's a piece of silicon holding that together. That's that unplugged. Right, in there you probably can't even see it. There's a connector. What you do is you pull the two, you put the two sides in, you crimp the two sides in and just pull it out and that will come straight out. So the two sides have been pulled, have been crimped in and it comes out. Simple as that. So we've got a yellow, a brown and a blue phase wire which I should be able to unplug those. So that's the phase wires out. And then I've got three Allen bolts that I've got to undo, and then that's out. Obviously, I've just taken I've just taken this speed controller out. Uh, this is the speed controller and BMS all built in one, uh, with a warranty, a water detection sticker on top of it. Uh, it's got eight sink compound, which it makes sense. Eight sink compound, obviously that piece mates onto that bit there. And it, it, the chassis actually, um, or the footboard, whatever it is, acts as a heatsink. A brilliant idea. Now, for those who are actually thinking of buying one of these, there's so few plastic parts. Everything's made of metal. This is aircraft aluminium, aircraft grade aluminium, apparently. Uh, it's definitely not plastic. Aluminium. Strangely, that's plastic. Now it's got an aluminium, aluminium cast, that's just plastic cover, covering aluminium. That's all aluminium, all this is aluminium. This is a plastic cover that goes over the battery. So, it's bloody stirred, really, really stirred, and it ain't going to break. So I've got those out, so I can put this to one side, and then start work on that. I've carefully removed all the, the warranty stickers that are on here um, so as I can stick them straight back on again. Uh, this, by the looks of it, four clips, six clips, eight, seven clips. So that's that, rubber seal, what's that, a what voltage is that, RD 63 volts, it's a 63 volt capacitor by the looks of it, uh, FETs, which I'm going to change the FETs out. I'm going to put some um, decent ones on there and I've got to take this off because I want to check to see if the traces yeah I'm going to have to beef the traces up that trace there that tiny trace there, that one there, that one there, that there and those bits in between they're what handles all the current now that goes to that connector there, which is actually the battery connector, which is an XT30 connector. So uh, very maximum this will handle is 30 amps, purely because um, it'll pop. There's the, in the middle there, there's the thermistor. So that's what senses the temperature of the, uh, the MOSFETs. So I think I'm going to be upgrading these, what are they, 15, 8, 10s. I don't know what bloody fets they are, but I don't like them. I'm going to put, put in the 4110, is it the 4110s? It's got the lettering on there, you can see a G and an S. So this one here is the gate, and that one's the source, that one's the drain. So the centre pin is actually the drain, which is where you can see, yeah, that's definitely the sort the gate that sorry the drain. So I'm going to be doing that. What process is that? I think that's an STM32 or an STM something or other. I'm going to take this conformal coating off here and I'm going to have a look. Not at the moment. This is the battery that's been stripped down. 
as you can see because there's the case there's the battery it's not easy I tell you it's not easy they've made it so as you can't bloody take it apart or you're not supposed to take it apart these are the two end caps the screws uh, the screws go onto the ends like that and then they, they bolt into the case like that but they've put so much sealant on there in that probably in the hopes to actually waterproof it or make it some uh, some form of water resistance but the weird thing is where's it gone there's a water detection strip there so when that gets wet it changes colour so your warranty is void so I don't even know why they bother waterproofing it to be honest uh, it probably took about 20 minutes to get that piece off and then 20 minutes to get that piece off because it's that tight as you can see by all the sealant on there anyway that's off this is out finally when you take the end caps off what you do is you push it from one end as hard as you bloody can without breaking something and it comes out now this is assembled um, it's just a pressure fit I think these are so they put them into the, 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 the relative holders and then they put them all together and then they bolt them it's bolted front and back like that and the BMS is on there which is constantly live I don't even know if you can see it actually there's, a, there's an LED there I don't know if you can see it flashing um, these are all the cell voltage um, connectors now this one here, this is the charge connector That that's a message on my phone this is the main power wire this one here is a battery comms cable if you unplug it uh, you get an error 21 on screen so literally that's all that is is a battery comms cable now I don't know if it's CAN bus I don't know the communication protocol I haven't got the faintest idea now the idea the, the reason why I took this apart is because I wanted more range on it it's got a fair amount of range at the minute but I want more now this is a 12,800 milliamp battery. These are 3,200 milliamp cells in a 10S 4P configuration. But I want more. They're actually 10 amp cells, which will give you, um, I don't know if that's 10 amp constant or burst, but even so, that's a 40 amp, because it's uh, in parallel, that's a 40 amp, we'll say, constant. Now what I wanted to do was, I wanted to use these in it, which are the Litocala LII 50A, which aren't 50 amp batteries, They're, they'll do 20, 10, 20 amp constant. I can get, I've calculated 30 of those in there to make the same voltage battery, so I can use the same BMS and the same everything else. That'll give me um, 15 amp per hour because they'll be in a 3P. 10s 3p configuration it looks like I'm gonna to have to stay with this for the time being until I can figure out another way I know you can fit external batteries and you can do bodge jobs and everything else and I don't like bodge jobs I don't want it external I want to keep it internal I want I don't I want a nice clean look because I love it but the range and the power could be uh, could be better um, when this gets low, when the battery starts going low, the power doesn't half drop off. Oh, I decided to, for, for, for bollocks. Because it's me. <laughs> I took the motor apart. These windings are quite thick. And the power that I've been putting through them, um, it hasn't touched them whatsoever and I've been going flat out for God knows how long. So we've got three hall sensors there, so it is censored. And all the wiring looks okay, it's all beefy enough. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some ferrofluid in here just to keep it nice and cool. Um, 
this side it's actually one cast there's no this doesn't come off it's part of the wheel uh, the only problem I might have with sealing it is the, the shaft itself but it should be alright because it's ferrofluid and the magnets look okay they're not curved magnets they're straight magnets but never mind if you're going to take these apart it does take a lot it's quite bloody tight you have to basically hammer it so you get the nut you put it on like that and then you whack the shit out of it and it pops it out eventually so it is actually a good it's a good fit on the bearing very good fit so I'm going to put some ferrofluid in there and then it'll be nice and cool that's back together that wasn't easy um, when you put it in obviously you put you put your stator in first which goes in with the right whack you've got to make sure it's centered you risk a damage of uh, risk you bollocks you take the risk of actually damaging the magnets around the outside if you don't get it straight so you've got to get it in reasonably straight and then it'll go in with the right whack and then because this bearing is so tight on here um, I had to wiggle it down push it down as far as I can put a few bolts in just very very loosely uh, get some card put it on here and just start whacking it down on the middle and then it pulls it into centre because there's no way you can do it by hand so that's all back together now um, and I know some people are going to say why don't you put different tyres on well, I don't want to yet I want to wear these out first but I will be upgrading the tyres and putting 10 inch, uh, 10 inch tyres on it I've been modifying this I've put the IFR 4110s IFRB 4110s on there I've beefed all the wire, all the, the traces up um, I've put some, what's that, 12, 12 AWG cable on there uh, so as I can put my external, use my battery and BMS and everything I've ordered, I've had to order a BMS from China, it's a Bluetooth BMS it's not the Ant BMS or anything but it's the only one that I can find that will work with this uh, purely because this has got, I think it's that one there, is actually a sense um, it's only a UART connection but I need a BMS that's got a UART output so I can fold this into thinking that it's got a decent BMS or it's got a BMS connected sorry so I've got to wait for that um, I put some heat sink heat sink heat sink pad I put a heat sink pad on there as well oh satisfying uh, this has got to go on the bottom of here to protect it some and then that is going to go on there and then that goes over the top there so that goes on there right so I'm going to put the controller back in uh, it's simple to put it in literally oh no it's not <laughs> the brake cable the brake cable has to go underneath and it has to fit along this root in here so it was a pain to get it in last time get a bolt in there So I've got that one in there, and then I put the two front ones in. The reason why I've put this XT60 on here, the reason being is when I come to do my battery, my new one, um, obviously I'm going to have to put my own connector on, so I may as well do it now. I, I won't have to take it apart again. And so with this battery, when you when you buy it, it comes with some tape. The bat, the bat light thing is actually taped in place but you can't get the bloody thing out what you have to do is put the cable in first somehow hold it tight and then get the battery in when you come to do it you'll know what I mean 
Yeah, so it's it's easy to get it in. <laughs> right, and so then it's a case of uh, there's the backlight. No, yes, no, that's the charge port. And then we've got the BMS sensor. And then we've got the ones to the front, which I haven't got a clue what they do. These are the these are the phase wires. Uh, sorry, these are the hall sense wires, and these are the phase wires. So looking at this for future reference, it's for my reference as well because I might actually be cutting these phase wires. You've got the blue on the left, the brown in the middle and the yellow on the right. Anyway, that's better than it was. It was squeaking its bloody head off before. That is much smoother. Here's the bottom panel, literally all the wiring's done. Literally the bottom panel goes on like that. And then you have to put all of these bloody screws in. So there you go. Now although it does actually say on this uh, not to use in the rain, it was absolutely pissing it down yesterday and the day before when I went out with it yeah all I've got is scrapes I've got a few scrapes on it now all I've got is a few marks um, there was no water inside as you saw so when they say do not use in the rain what a load of bollocks the thing is one day we're all gonna have to go around on these this sort of thing Personal electric transport, it's the only way that you're going to be able to get about because they will, one day, they'll ban cars off, cars off the road Mark my words, and then you can sit there in 50 years time and then You remember when Tony said this? <laughs> it's going to happen This is a BMS This is the programming thing for it USB thing thing 